Uh, I've got a couple things I want to go over today. And uh, one of the questions that I get a lot and I've been getting more recently is on the chart styles and the chart styles that I use and how you create those buttons and so forth. So I thought the first thing I would do, let's just pull up a uh, chart, uh, the Texas Instruments. And you can see that I've got a number of these uh, chart style buttons. And I'm going to try to make, make my screen a little bit bigger here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Oops, there we go. So here are the buttons. Now, I don't know if the, the names are coming across here, but I've got them each name. This is a 10 minute, five day, an hourly, one month chart, a daily, six month chart, weekly, three year chart, a monthly 15 year chart, and then I have a relative chart one year. So if I click on one of these, let's go with the relative chart one year. You will see that Texas Instruments, um, I have a chart to Texas Instruments. This is what I was showing you earlier with some of the earnings reports. Uh, it tells me that it's in the industry group, the DJ USSC. Um, so I can see what the industry group is doing. I can see how Texas Instruments is doing relative to the semiconductors how it's doing relative to the S&P 500 and how the semiconductors are doing relative to the S&P 500. And here is how I have this chart set up. So you can always come back to the recording and take a look at this to uh, set up a chart similar to this if you like it. Um, but you can, you, know, you can get in and do whatever you want to do with these uh, different um, you know, style buttons. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is you can see this little, I don't know, like an arrow or carrot kind of a symbol here. If you click on that, it gives you all of your saved chart styles and you can move them around. If for instance, you decide, hey, relative charts, the one that I really wanna have up top, then you can move it just like that and then go back and you will see at the top is my relative chart one year. Let me again, zero in on this. So now at the very top is the relative chart uh, for one year. So that's just how you can kind of move these buttons around. So let's uh, go back here now. And uh, I don't really want it there, so I'm gonna move it back. But that just is kind of how you could move it around. Now let's say, all right, I want a different style. I just, you know, there's something else. There's, there's some other style that I want. So what you can do is go down and set your chart up however you want. Let me actually get out of this one just get back to my default here. Okay, so let's say that, you know, you're looking and you, um, I'm just gonna set up a few different things here. Let's say that you want the full quote on here. Um, let's say that you don't like volume overlaid with price. Let's say you want it set, actually, I'm gonna show you something even uh, a little different there. Let's leave that, uh, let's just turn volume off here. So we have the full quote, I'm gonna come back to volume in a minute, I'll show you something kind of interesting. So here is the full quote, um, price labels. You know, if that's important, what it's gonna tell you is some of the key price levels, uh, labels uh, out to the right-hand side of your screen. So if you can't read the numbers and you're not, well, let me just show you. Uh, I'm gonna take it back off, but uh, I'll update it and show you. See the labels, how you've got key prices. Uh, to me, it just adds too much. It's too busy on the chart, so I don't like that. So I'm gonna take that back off. I don't want the price labels. Um, I use log scale um, going across here. Now the zoom thumbnail, I'll go ahead and put that in there. Uh, that's certainly something that Aaron likes to use. And I think Greg uses as do some other commentators. Um, going through the uh, overlays. Well, I tell you what, we'll go, we'll go over some of these other things. I do wanna show you um, how you can do this volume indicator though how you can change this and I can say, okay, give me a 50 day moving average. Um, this is something that if you just use the volume attribute up here, you can't get that moving average. But if you use volume under indicator, then you can. And so I'm gonna increase the height to 1.0 and uh, let's go with this. Actually, instead of having the volume below in an indicator, I'm gonna put it behind the price. So the volume is still gonna be behind price like I was showing before, but now you're gonna see it with a moving average behind it. Let's update. Okay, so now the, uh, some of the features that I, I clicked on, first of all, here's your full quote. So if you're wondering Texas Instruments, what, 
what uh, industry group is it in? Well, if you have that full quote button checked, you'll see that it's in the technology sector and it's in the semiconductor industry. It gives you a lot more information here. Um, you know, it's got the bid, it's got bid size, you've got your PE showing on here, earnings per share, a lot more fundamental data that you might be interested in. You know, does it trade options? Yes. Here's your annual dividend, your dividend yield, and it even gives you your scooter number. So it gives you a lot of really good information on here that you might have to do a lot of research elsewhere uh, if you don't uh, uh, have that in included in here. Also, you can see it's giving you the change, your last, and your volume over here on the right-hand side. But it's a lot more information. Some like to use it. It takes up a lot of real estate on your chart. So for us to use it here on Market Watchers Live doesn't make a lot of sense because it's going to make your charts even smaller uh, that you're able, you know, and trying to follow along with what we're looking at. Um, but it is a, there's a lot of useful information in there. And so if that appeals to you, that's certainly one thing that you might want to look at. So now that you've got this thing set up, and I'm going to go down below here and look at the volume, there's a really light uh, line coming through here, and it's telling you what the 50-day moving average is. If you recall down here, I switched over. I took volume off, but under indicators, I put in volume, and I said put it behind the price with a 50-day moving average. So this line that you see coming through here is the 50-day moving average. So if you're wondering, is volume heavy today or was it heavy you know, yesterday or the day before? Well, looking at Texas Instrument, you can see that volume the last several days has been above its 50-day moving average as it's been moving lower. So it's just telling you that there's a lot more movement to the downside here on Texas Instruments. Um, so I, I think it's a useful tool. And uh, if, if you're having trouble spotting whether or not you have higher than normal volume or lower than normal volume simply by looking at the bars, you can put a calculation in there. You can make it a 50-day, you can make it a 10-day, you can make it a 200-day, whatever you want. Um, all you have to do is go in here to the parameters and fill in what uh, moving average you want to use. All right, now, okay, so we've got this chart, and we're like, okay, this is the one. I want to have this chart. This is the one I want to save. Well, you can add new down here under next to chart style. There's a button or a link, add new. So if I click add new, it's then going to ask me what's the name of my chart style. What do you want? Uh, well, I mean, I'll call it the bizarre chart style just because I don't have any other name for it right now. And notice here it's giving you an option to put in a button. Now, I have six buttons here. If I choose button one, it's going to replace button one. I'm going to do that for this exercise just to show you. But when I click that add button, now button one is bizarre. I don't know if you can see that title, but let's uh, zero in here so you can see this. So when I hover here, you can see that's my bizarre chart. I still have six buttons, just like I had before. But what happened is it replaced the uh, button one that I had here before. So if you go in here and click, you will see that it didn't actually delete it. It actually just moved it down underneath. and replaced it with the bizarre. So what I can do now is I can edit. I don't know. If, well, there we go. So I can get rid of the bizarre. I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it. And now I can grab this chart that was replaced and I can drag it back up here. And now I'm done. And so let's get back out of here. And if I go to Texas Instruments again. Now my default comes up, and if I go back to my first button, it's 10 minute, five day again. So the bizarre chart's gone, I deleted it. So it's really simple. Once you get the chart that you want, all you have to do is come down here and hit the add new. Now it will add the new, if, let, let's do this again. Let me, uh, well, let's just change something here. Let me go back to, uh, let's add the accumulation distribution line. I'm going to update this. Now I got the AD line down here. So now this is the chart style. So if I say add new and call this bizarre again and add, this time I don't select a button. And you look through here and you say, well, where is it? I, I just added it and it's not here. Well, what happens, you click on this and it's down below. 
So now you have to move the button up to get it to wherever you want it to go. So if I go up here to the top, now I have seven charts saved, seven different buttons. And so now at the top, there's my bazaar button. And again, you can call it whatever you want. So I still have everything here. Just remember when you add new, you need to go back in. If you choose a button, it's going to replace that button. It's not going to eliminate the button that you had prior. So don't panic. It's just going to move it down below. You have to drag it back up. Now, in this case, again, I'm not really interested in saving this. So it's very simple to get rid of a button. If you don't want, you just hit the trash can and delete and go back. And now I'm back to the six buttons again. So chart styles are pretty cool. And uh, it, you know, all you have to do is play around. Don't be afraid of it. It's pretty easy. Um, but, uh, you know, you can then save however many different chart styles that you want. And so instead of me going in here and having to type my stock and then going down here and having to figure out how I want to show it, it's all saved. So unleash the power of stock charts. I mean, that's what you really want to do. Um, now, a couple other things I want to get into. Uh, chart attributes. So if you go down here to the bottom, you're going to see at the bottom of each chart, you've got chart attributes, you've got overlays, you've got indicators. Now, we could spend a day going through all of these things, and that's really not what this is designed. I just want to go over a couple of things, make sure you're aware of it. You may use it. You may not be interested in it, uh, but I'm going to just go through and point out a few of these indicator, a few of these attributes first. Now, one thing I've been asked before, because I do this sometimes on my blog articles, I'll have a chart, and over on the right side, I'll have a bunch of empty space so that I can kind of project what I think the market might do or what this stock might do based on a pattern. And sometimes I want to save that because I want to see if, if it's you know, continuing to perform like I thought it would. To do that, this is a daily chart. So if I go over here to the extra bars and I type in 30 extra bars and I click update, it's going to give me 30 more days worth of data here. Now I can go in and I can say, well, you know, I think this is going to be a W bottom. So I can just draw my lines in, annotate, and then I can save that chart. And if Texas Instruments keeps going down below, say, the recent lows, then I'll know that, well, probably my W um, forecast isn't working out. But it just gives you an opportunity, a little bit more space on the chart to, uh, to annotate or to do whatever you want looking into the future. And then you can save those charts like that. Let's get rid of the extra bars. Um, full quote which is right here. I showed you that, so I'm not going to do that again. Price labels I showed you. And then uh, let's, let's tack on the Zoom thumbnail because this is something that, like I said, Aaron uses. Many of the other commentators use it from time to time. It's not something that I'm overly... Um, it, it doesn't really work for me. I don't really need it, but I can understand why some would use it if you're looking to see whether or not you, know, you move back below certain moving averages. It's a whole lot easier in a thumbnail than it is trying to look on the major chart. But all that's doing is it's just extending your chart out. So I would have to resize my charts at this point in order to get everything to fit. But I just wanted to show you what that Zoom thumbnail does. It just Here it's just highlighting essentially last few weeks of the data. So from the 16th here, where we were going higher, and then this action, which is going lower, it's just being highlighted over in the thumbnail. I will check that back off. Now let's talk about overlays. There's one thing I wanted to show you in the overlays that you may or may not be aware of, and it's volume by price. So let's just uh, I'll get rid of the accumulation distribution line. I think I got everything else checked back off again. Let's update here. And this is volume by price, which you can see on Texas Instruments. It's kind of interesting. Because if you look back over the last six months, which is what this chart is, it is adding the volume in certain ranges together. If it's an up day and it falls in this range, then it's green volume. If it's a down day and it's in this range, it shows up as red volume. And so it's just another way to maybe take a look at where key support is. So if you're looking at this, the chart alone, you might look back and say, well, there's a lot of congestion here. This looks like pretty good support. And what the volume by price is telling you is, is it's basically confirming that, that this is the area where we have seen the most volume, the most shares change hands back and forth. So I think volume by price, and we don't go over this a whole lot, but I think there's a, 
there are definitely times when it makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're looking at this over the last six months, you can see that this area is a key support level. If we shorten it to say the last two months, you know, the, the relationship will change as to which area is which. So all of a sudden now, all of the volume, you know, is up here. So whether if you use the volume by price, one thing I would suggest is that you set it up based on your trading strategy. If you're a short-term trader and you're looking for key short-term support, pulling up a five-year weekly chart and using volume uh, or using this uh, volume by price may not be the best time frame. So if you're a day trader, you probably want to look at maybe an hourly chart or something that's much shorter term if you're looking at days. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Let's see. Um, indicators, a couple of indicators. Let me get back again. We'll go back to continue to use Texas Instruments. But a couple of indicators you may not be aware of, and I'm going to set these up. So the first one I'm going to set up, dividends. If you're, if you're interested in the history of dividends, I'd suggest that you have this set up as an indicator. Another indicator um, that I think is useful, and some of my fellow commentators use this quite a bit, scooter line. So you want to make sure you know where the scooter is, how your stock stacks up among some of its peers. And then I showed you volume as an indicator earlier. But again, I'll show you how to get to it. I'm not going to pull it up again, but... Volume is under the indicator window, and uh, it's down toward the bottom, alphabetical order, obviously. Uh, but let's uh, update this. And now what you will see is that, well, the dividends, uh, it's showing, this, oh, there's only one dividend. Let's, let's look at a weekly chart on, uh, go back a few years. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's do it this way. All right, so now you've got a weekly chart, and you can see the dividends, what is paid each quarter, and whether the dividends are going up or going down. And you want to know what the long-term history is on the dividends? Let's pull up the monthly, and let's go back the last 15 years. And here's your history of dividends, and you can see it's been slowly rising. So you got a company that is increasing its dividends on a regular basis over the last 15 years. I don't see any drops. I think that's important if you're looking for a company and you're really relying on their dividends. You don't want to see dividends going up and down. You want to see constant, consistent move to the upside in dividends. So I think that's a uh, definitely a uh, indicator to, to keep in mind. And then finally, the scooter, you can see with Texas Instruments up near that 90 level. All right, uh, the last thing I want to do quickly is just show you perf charts. And I pulled this up the other day when I was showing sectors. Uh, you can go into the defined groups. I like to pull up the sector ETFs. And one thing you may not realize is you can drag this over, and it's going to show you the 200 days, and it'll give you the dates up here. So you can constantly look and see what happened during different times. But the other thing is if you think the 200 days – is too long, you can double click this and you can change. So let's say you really just want to look, say over a month, you know, let's say 30 days. And now I can drag it back. I can go back and look at the 30 days from April 13th to May 24th of, now you're going to say it's more than 30 days. It's 30 trading days. So from April 13th, to May 24th, back in 2007. So if you want to see what happened to the market as it, as it began its bear market, uh, let's take a look at October of here is October 8, 2007. That was just about the top. So over the next 30 trading days, you can see what happened as the market was topping. Just a great feature and I think pretty cool. So anyhow, with that, let's uh, recap some of the things we talked about today. Um, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, um, you know, the charts, the way that I use them, I think if you go back and you, and you um, pull up, your chart styles, you can adjust those. Uh, those chart style buttons, I think, are really cool. Uh, I can't overemphasize that enough. You can see how quickly, I mean, Aaron and I use this all the time. We're going over to those buttons. We're clicking. Imagine the time that it would take for us to go through and manually adjust and change every one of the settings. You have a style button. You save it, and you can just click quickly, move back and forth. Chart attributes, 
Uh, we went over a few of those, how you can add some extra bars, the full quote, price label, zoom thumbnail, overlays. I showed you the volume by price, indicators, dividends, scooter line, and also using volume as an indicator. And then finally, the perf charts, just giving you some uh, ways to manipulate that to give you different in, more of an in-depth look as you uh, scroll back into history.